All right, second day, grinding along. What we got? Ryan, uh, can I ask you about the, uh, the, the change in the practice schedule this year? Last year, I think you did four on, one off. You're doing three on, one off. Is that done in response to like injury studies that you might have come across, or is that done more to simulate the regular season schedule? No, I'd say, you know, in June and May, we're, we're doing a lot of evaluation, uh, getting ready for training camp. So I spend a lot of time with, with Ronnie Barnes and Lee Weiss and Mark Loescher and Sam Codd. They, they do a great job of kind of doing their research, presenting a plan. We talk about it. And again, everything is, is for the players. We try to do the best we can. And, you know, just right before this started, I, I called those guys up. I asked them to have another meeting um, just seeing the forecast with the heat uh, to make sure we were we were doing everything we could do to kind of gear up and not overload the players early on. Um, they do a great job with that. What happened with uh, Jalen yesterday and will he practice today? He will, yeah. He got a little, a little hot at the end there, took a few reps, um, but I, he'll be good to go. What, what do you look for early on with, with new, new players, uh, especially rookies in terms of work ethic and comportment and all those things that might make you think, hey, this kid's somebody I want to play for me. Well, we spend a lot of time with them. You know, they have extra meetings, uh, we teach them how to be a pro, develop a routine. Uh, we understand there's going to be plenty of mistakes, uh, not just for them, for everybody. So, you know, make sure that we're doing a good job correcting the mistakes, um, teaching them how to be a pro, how we do things in our program. And, you know, I think the veterans do a good job with that, helping them as well. Dave, as part of that teaching them how to practice, you had a pretty good collision yesterday between two. Yeah, some of it's friendly fire, you know, and you, you, you try like heck not to, uh, not to have those. Um, you're going to have some of them. I just had a, a meeting today where I showed a couple clips where I think we could do a little better job of taking care of one another. But again, we're in a competitive situation. Um, everybody's trying to compete for a role, some role, whatever that may be. Uh, but understand we only have a certain amount of guys and we certainly try to do our best to maintain their safety. How is Rakeem doing? After, One more time. How is Rakeem doing after that car accident he had on Tuesday? Um, he's sore. Um, he won't practice again today, uh, but you know, so could have been worse. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's where he's at right now. I think he's making progress. Okay, so it's not anything he'll be out for? No, he'll be out for no, him. no. What's the story of Vernon Butler? He, he didn't report. We're kind of working through some things. That's really all I got for you, Dan. I understand the question, but that's where we're at. How's the first day of pads, Dave? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to go back and, and look. I'm just, I don't get too far ahead. A few days, whenever the acclimation period is. What did you see? Oh, sorry. sorry, no, that's okay. What did you see from uh, Saquon yesterday? You know, you didn't have him here in the spring. That was your yeah. first look up him on the field, really? Uh, normal Saquon. You start with Bredesen at center. What's what's your plan there? Why start with him? Uh, today would be John Michael. So uh, yeah. So today, you know, and Bobby's done a good job. We've talked about this, I think, last year quite a bit relative to the rotation for the offensive lineman. You'll see, I'd say, a good amount of rotation in there on a, on probably a day to day basis. Sometimes a period to period basis. Uh, John Michael will be going with the the first group today, and then Ben will be rolling in there. Uh, oh. Not just at center, but I'd say at guard too. How has John Michael uh, handled the learning process of the offense? Good. Yeah, he's a, he's a smart guy. He works hard. I think, the, again, that's a good room in terms of uh, the veterans really helping out the younger players. There's a lot, as you know, on your plate playing center. Uh, he's a very cerebral guy. He's intelligent. Um, you know, he's made progress since he's been here. Would you prefer not to have the, the revolving door at left guard that you had last year? Where, and even even just the two-man thing that you started with. Yeah, I, I think whatever we think is best. Uh, that's why we, we're, you know, we'll let this thing play out as long as we can and, and rotate guys. And uh, if they earn a spot to play, then we play them. And if one guy stands out, then he stands out. Do so. you think, how do you think Ben played last year? Um, and and you, could that job have remained his if, if the, you hadn't been hurt in Jacksonville? Um, I don't know. That's a, I'm really focused on where we're at this year. Um, and there's some good competition. Uh, Ben's been a good player for us the short time we've been here with him. Um, I think he's got some flexibility uh, at center, at guard, so he'll have, a, he'll have an opportunity to compete it out. 
what, what, is the, um, what is the skill set necessary for a receiver to be able to line up in the backfield? I see you do all that. You did that with Paris a little bit. I mean, is that something you like with him? And what qualities does that guy have to have? Yeah, I would say that, you know, training camp is, you know, and OTAs, but early training camp, you're experimenting with a lot of different things. Um, you know, it's not just Paris. There's been a lot of guys that we've we've done that with. And again, there's some things that you're trying to take a look at. There's different situations that we're, we're putting these guys in to see how they react and see if they can handle it both mentally and the physical part of it. Um, you know, we'll continue to do that through training camp, whether it's with a defensive player, an offensive player playing at a different spot. Um, you try to create as much value for the player as you can and as much flexibility for your system as you can with, with people being able to do multiple things. So. Uh, whether that happens or not, I couldn't tell you right now. But you know, we've seen last year during this time we did the same thing. But generically, what what does that you know? Not everyone can do that. You know, what, what does well, it just depends do? what you do with them. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't have to do the same thing with everybody. You figure out what they can do well and, and try to do some of those things. And we're still doing that. Um, we'll do that throughout throughout training camp and really into the early part of the season. So. Again, what we ask Paris to do might be something different than we ask another player to do, whether it's a tight end or a running back, uh, a slot receiver, an outside receiver. That's why you kind of do all these things. Besides besides the player who he is, what's the value of having Beasley here? Besides the, the value of just him as a player? Bees, it, um, good, we thought we'd add competition to the, to the spot. We had some guys that were, were gonna be on PUP. Um, he's been in our system, uh, smart player, he's crafty. Uh, and he's played a long time in this league. So I think when you have a veteran in a room, any room, not just bees, but any room, I think, you know, younger players can ask them, you know, questions and learn from some of the stuff that they've been through. I heard you, you obviously didn't know the players and you had to put them through situations in camp, like particularly Daniel, so you have to respond, yeah. you put them in kind of adverse situations. Sure. Do you do that again or do you change yeah. how you're No, we'll do that. You know, not just the players, but the coordinators too. Um, you know, there's two different ways that we practice relative to the to the periods. Uh, some is, you know, you just script the plays. So, again, I could give this to my five-year-old. Well, he doesn't read as well, but uh, my seven-year-old and let her just read off the script and you plan it out the night before, or the, you know, during the summer of things you want to make sure you see both schematically and I would say physically from the players as you asked about Paris. Uh, and then there's, you know, call it periods, if you will. And uh, sometimes you try to put the defense at a disadvantage and maybe do five second and ones right in a row where it's a pretty high percentage for the offense or you flip it and put, you know, five third and 17s in a row um, and try to put them in adverse situations where it's, you know, advantage the other way. So uh, sometimes the coaches know or the players know, but most of the time they don't. Um, and that's my job to make sure we're, you know, trying to apply as much pressure on really everybody as we can. What's that kind of though, like you, we heard a lot about explosive plays, right? Sure. And how that's a big thing. How much do you focus on that yeah. this summer? And do you ask Daniel to be more aggressive? Do you call more shot plays? Like sure. how, how do you go about working on that all throughout training camp? Yeah, uh, good question. I, I'd say um, obviously we were down last, I think, in explosive plays. Uh, you do a lot of research in the off season. Um, there's plays that you call to be explosive that maybe just don't turn out that way relative to how they're getting played. Uh, you, you can't just focus on one area, certainly an area we need to improve on that we'll try to improve on. Uh, but I never want Daniel to force uh, any ball. Uh, will there be times where I might go to him and say, hey, let this, some, let this thing rip. Um, that gets picked, like, I don't really care. It gets intercepted in practice, whatever. Let's let's take a look at how it looks. But, uh, you know, it's not just that. There's a lot of areas probably in all three phases that, you know, we've done a lot of research in um, in the off season, and, you know, areas that we got to improve on. Do you see continuing growth from Daniel in terms of command and confidence? Because for us watching practice, it just has a different feel to it. Um, yeah, no, I, look, he works really hard, um, I think when you're in the second year of a system where you're not just, you know, you're learning where everybody's at and a quarterback, it's, it's a very difficult position to play and operate at a high level. There's so many things that happen before you even get out of the huddle uh, that you have to do. And when you're just learning the system, there's a lot of things that are going through your head. So um, to try to, you know, learn from the things we did last year a little bit, I think that there's, you know, there's advantage in that, uh, but it doesn't guarantee anything. 
Darian and, 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 and Micah yesterday with the inside linebacker position, kind of. Early, yeah. early, Charlotte, it's early to tell. It's um, both those guys are young players, obviously, that we drafted. Beavers is coming back from an injury. You know, Micah played a lot of football. I think he was the only only young guy that kind of played the whole year. Um, so we'll move those guys around, give them their opportunity to, to show what they can do early. It's really too early for that. Are you still kind of learning, for lack of a better word, what Darren Waller can bring in totality to this offense? I mean, he obviously stood out yesterday. He probably will stand out a lot of these days. Yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning really all the players. I mean, even the guys that we had last year, they're, you know, they've made improvements. And that's your job as a, as a coach is to make sure we're allowing these guys to try to be as successful as they can and put them in different positions. And there's a lot of good give and take. Um, and you need that in, in meetings, too. You can go through a practice and then you know sit down as a coaching staff, watch the tape together, go into the meeting with the players, and it's just the coaches talking. That's not really how we do it. We, we really want feedback from the players. Um, and look, maybe it's something that we ran that he doesn't really feel comfortable with, not just him. It could be any skilled player or somebody on defense. And then we come out and have a walkthrough, and maybe we change it up a little bit. But there's there's good give and take. That's what training camp is, is for. OTAs was for that. We still got a long way to go in terms of, you know, figuring all that out. But I'd say he's a very good communicator in that regard. Everyone, I mean, one. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Right. we, we can do With two. With real quick, I just want to know that like, yeah. he has an injury history. Obviously, he didn't play that much the last two years. You were very conscious of that last year with guys. Mm -hmm. You have a how how much do you expect? How do you expect to handle him this yeah, summer I'd say, in that regard? Yeah, no, another we that's another thing that we talk about the four guys that I mentioned early on to you, Patty, uh, about some of the players that uh, we want to have a good plan for uh, as we go through training camp. So whether that's a little less reps, eventually a day off, however it may be. Now the schedule is pretty conducive to, you know, hopefully taking care of your body with the three days on, one day off. But uh, certainly he's, you know, he's he's one of those guys that we we definitely have talked about. Okay. All right, what do you want? Oh, sorry. I can ask you. No, you, you go ahead. All right. Um, you, you obviously talked about the, the rotation at center with Ben sure. and, and John Michael. Do you have spots on the defense that you're kind of going to do the same thing, maybe second safety or slot corner? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say, um, you know, there's good competition at some certain spots, and, and you guys will, will see it out there. We're, we're, we're rotating different positions um, and giving everybody a fair opportunity to go out there and show what they can do. Um, so, you know, offensively, defensively, different spots in the kicking game, whether it's on the punt team, the kickoff team, you know, that's the time to do it right now is to make sure you're, you're giving everybody a fair shot uh, in a competitive situation.